wrestling fans and welcome to another edition of the Pile Driver Weekly. My name is Electric Eric Davidson and this is my co-host Mr. Ace Larson. We got a big show for you today. Uh, it's the Independence Day edition of the Pile Driver Weekly, our 15th episode. Uh, but before we get rolling, I just wanted to mention uh, the passing of Matt Bourne at the age of 55. Uh, some of you may remember him as the original Doink the Clown. He was also Big Josh in WCW. Um, I remember him wrestling under the name of Matt Bourne. As a matter of fact, he wrestled the very first WrestleMania against uh, Ricky Steamboat. Uh, the cause of death is undetermined at the moment, but just want to give our condolences to his friends and family and say rest in peace, Matt. And, you know, unfortunately, once again, have to discuss the loss of another wrestler. But anyhow, that's that's that. And now we're going to move on to OVW. OVW. OVW this week from the Davis Arena in Louisville, Kentucky. We see a, a tribute to Jackie Fargo. Um, you know, we talked about that on the show last week. And it's funny because I noticed when the picture of him came up, they had the dates wrong. Now, there is some confusion over his exact date of birth, but they had it wrong by like 10 years. It said 1938. It's, cl- it's more like 1928. That was the date that I, you know, kept seeing. But I've also seen 1930. So it's kind of in question. But the funny thing is, is that Gilbert Corsi, the announcer, was talking about Jackie Vargo and said he died at the age of 85. Well, 85, that would be about 1928. You know, not 1938, like it said on their screen on the opening. So, um Anyway, on with the show. The Coalition comes out. Uh, Jason Wayne and Crimson get in the ring while the rest of the members just kind of surround the ring. Um, They talk about Hayes and Valles and call them yellow cowards. And out come Hayes and Valles with backup. They got Hal and Spud and uh, Rudy Switchblade. And, you know, they say they don't want to wait for Saturday Night Special. And it breaks down into a brawl. Um, Ali Baez gets thrown into a chair here and um, looks like he's hurt pretty bad. Then after we come back from a break, uh, suddenly Crimson and Wayne are all four going ahead with the match uh, <laughs> since they think that Baez is not going to be able to wrestle. Of course, they're suddenly willing to put the belts on the line here. Um, so... Hayes comes out by himself, ready to take him on by himself. He, he has some backup with him. Uh, once again, Ryan Howe, our good friend, uh, Rockstar Spud, and Rudy Switchblade as his backup. And uh, they start the match, and Hayes starts out really good here, has a good showing, and he actually takes off his prosthetic leg and starts using it as a weapon. Uh, the Coalition start to get the better of him, though, then out comes Muhammad Ali Baez in a sling, just in time to get the hot tag. Then another brawl ensues. Of course, this is a no DQ match, so it's none of this is uh, of consequence as far as the fall. Um, Baez gets thrown into the post again, and uh, Wayne rips off the sling and slaps an arm bar on him. And Hayes comes up and nails Wayne with the lead pipe that the Coalition has been using as a weapon, giving him a little dose of his own medicine there. That allows Valles to get the pin, and we have new tag team champions. So that match was slated for Saturday Night Special. I don't know what we're going to see at Saturday Night Special now. Maybe they'll just do a rematch. I'm not sure. Um, We'll be there. We'll let you know. Uh, We will be covering that next week because the Saturday Night Special is this Saturday, July 6th. Um, On to the next match, we get Jesse Goddard's out on the microphone. You know, he's been having that run of bad luck. 
you know, but he says he doesn't need his agent, blah, blah, blah. And whoever's brave enough to face him, come on out, basically. Out comes Marcus Anthony. <laughs> um, it, not a horrible match, but nothing really to, to write home about here. Marcus Anthony gets another victory. Then Jay Bradley is in the back um, complaining about not being top contender. But, of course, he got beat by Rob Terry last week, so I don't know what his gripe is. He talks to Dylan Bostic about being on TNA pay-per-view and gut check and all that stuff. Then up comes uh, Jamin Olivenzia and says, you know, he, he beat, um, after he beats Rob Terry, he's going to, no, excuse me, he's going to beat Jamin tonight, then he's going to beat Rob Terry at s and We get a TV title match next. Tony Gunn against his former friend Randy Royal. Not a bad match here. Uh, Tony controls most of the match, but then Randy gets the pin after a low blow and he taunts Tony Gunn after the match. Uh, Gunn tackles him and wails on him, and then uh, that's that. Then we get the main event, Jay Bradley versus Jamin Olivenzia, and Rob Terry is on commentary here. Bradley brings a chair into the ring at one point and acts like he's going to hit Jamin with it. Terry comes in and grabs the chair, makes the save, and hits Bradley with it which causes Jamin to get DQ'd. Then Rob Terry tries to hit Bradley a second time, but misses and accidentally hits Jamin, lays him out with it. Or was it an accident? We think it was, but anyhow, that's OVW for this week. Don't forget, every Wednesday at the Davis Arena, 4400 Shepherdsville Road, they do their TV tapings. If you can't make it out for the matches, they're on WBNA 21 every Saturday at noon, and I believe they replay it Wednesday nights at 9. Um, but, you know, it's a good, cheap night out, fun for the family. Uh, always have a good time at the Davis Arena. And don't forget, coming up this weekend, Saturday the 6th, the Saturday night special. Doors open at 6.30, bell time 7.30. Tickets are $12 at the door, I believe. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's worth it. But that's OBW for this week. And next we're going to move on to Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor. Okay, Ring of Honor. Um, not really much to cover this week. Because the show that immediately followed the pay-per-view was basically just kind of a... Recap. A, it was a retrospective of like the Briscoes. They they showed like clips of them wrestling, and they also showed them on their chicken farm in Sandy Fort Delaware. <laughs> um, and that took up the whole episode. And then this past week's episode was yeah, what you said, a recap yeah, best of Best in the, in the World. Actually, showed a couple of matches from Best in the World. Um, but I, I do want to throw out there that rumor has it that. The Briscoes are heading for WWE, and they're just rumors at this. Point. Yeah, it's just rumors at this point. They're it's just speculation. They could just be taking time off. Yeah, but Jay was injured by scum. He was attacked and injured by scum. And Nigel McGinnis is going to be making an announcement regarding the title. On next week's episode, which tells me he's going to strip him, and we're going to have either a tournament or a battle royal or something yeah. to determine a new champion. So, you know, that kind of makes it look like they're going to WWE, which they might not be. But I mean, they just put the belt on him after all these years. Would he really give it up just to take time off at this point? It's got to be money. Um, it's could, gotta be money. I would, yeah. I would think he, yeah, they're heading WWE's way, but. It, we'll we'll see before too long. Of course, even if they do, they'll probably dwindle in obscurity down in NXT along with Chris Hero <laughs> uh, and um, El Generico. Yeah, uh, like the Ring of Honor wasteland. Yeah, but uh, Cesaro made it out alive. Well, barely. <laughs> yeah, he, barely. He's, he's got a pulse. Uh, he's got a pulse right now. But anyhow, that's about all there is for Ring of Honor this week. And next, we're going to move on to Impact. Impact. 
Okay, TNA Impact, once again from Peoria, Illinois. Peoria, Illinois, sorry. Um, first, it opens up with recaps. Uh, then we get Sting out to the ring, and he talks about the main event mafia. You know, out comes Angle, and he gets on the mic and is talking about you know the original concept of the main event mafia, and how it was you know all world champions. Then he talks about the aces and eights, and then he talks about the goals of the main event mafia, and um, he says there will be another member named tonight. Um, now before we get too far in depth here, I just want to say I, I think TNA's, you know, we've said before, they're really improving their product. I think they're doing great right now. Uh, they just topped themselves tonight, too. Yeah, up. A, another yeah. good episode here. We get a recap of Chris Saban winning the X title at Slammiversary. Then the Aces and Eights corner him backstage and threaten him not to cash in the X title for his shot. Um, we see Adam O'Reiner, the big O, getting ready for his gut check match. And uh, then we get the X Division title match, which is Saban versus Suicide versus Kenny King. Kind of off a, a, little, a little bit. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Um, it, it did kind of pick up towards the end. It seemed like they were a little out of rhythm. Um it, the finish seemed like a botch, uh, but I, I don't think it was. I think it was kind of meant to look that way. Um, but, but it was all overshadowed by yeah. What's going um, on. Suicide holds the ropes, rolls up Kenny King, and gets the pin, therefore becoming the new X Division champion. Now, before he can really have too much time to celebrate his victory, though, out comes Hulk Hogan with um, TJ Perkins in tow. He's like almost practically dragging him out to the ring or the ramp. And I, I, we never revealed it here on the show, but TJ Perkins has been the guy since the return of suicide um, that's been in the costume. And Hogan is basically saying, hey, this is the real suicide, and somebody jumped in backstage and stole his costume, and the imposter suicide takes off through the crowd, gets out of Dodge. Um, then we see Hogan in the back saying that whoever it is has until the end of the night to reveal himself or be stripped of the title. Uh, wh what do you think of this here, Ace? Well, this this is where it was getting interesting for me. This is one of those moments to where wrestling was fun again. In yeah. Since it was something new. You yeah. Know, it was something refreshing. It was something we hadn't seen in a while. Sure. You know, who's this imposter? I mean, who could this be? Yeah. And really, unlike WWE, we really had no clue no, where I, they were going with this I, at all. I had two guesses. And one was Christopher Daniels. Yep. Did we say AJ Styles? And AJ Styles. Yeah. I, I figured it was going to be one of those two guys. And Daniels had actually, in fact, played suicide before in the past. Um, but you'll see at the end of the show who it is yeah. here if you didn't catch it. Um, but, yeah, we were blown away. Yeah. Um, then our good friend, OVW's own Ryan Howe, getting ready for his gut check match against um, Adam O'Reiner. Uh, really excited for Ryan here. And we've known about this for weeks now, but uh, Ryan asked us not to talk about it on the show or anything until it actually happened. And we respect his wishes, of course. You know, he didn't want to jinx anything, basically, I think. But, um, yeah, we're, we're just so excited for Ryan and really, really hoping this is his big break here. Um, th that match is next, and Ryan comes out jamming on his guitar as always, and... Both guys just start out full tilt. Um, you can tell O'Reilly are not the best worker. He's got, like, the great look as far as the McMahon look. Uh, really green, though, wasn't Yeah, he? really green. Looked kind of stiff in the ring. Um, Ryan looked a lot more polished yeah. all around. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he just slightly flubbed one spot. But, I mean, God, could you imagine how the nerves, the butterflies that must be 
Are you talking about the uh, top rope spot? No, I thought that he pulled that off pretty good. That that was O'Reiner's. When, he, when uh, he rolled it into the pin because O'Reiner yeah, was he, out of position. Yeah, O'Reiner was out of position on that, and Ryan actually landed a little short saved his legs, it, though. Yeah, rolled into a um, pin. We know the one kick after the drop kick. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, which there again, that could have been O'Reiner being in the wrong spot. Yeah. But uh, all in all, I, I thought Ryan looked great, and like I said, we're really cheering for him here, keeping our fingers crossed that this is his big break. He's a good friend of ours, and you know, that aside, he's an OVW guy, and we always try to, you know, cheer for the OVW guys when they get a shot at the, the big time there, and. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see till next week if he gets the contract or not. But unfortunately, Ryan loses the match here. Um, but that doesn't always translate. Like Adam Pierce won his gut check match, but he didn't get a contract. Uh, of course, neither did the guy that he beat. But just because you lose or win doesn't mean it's going to go one way or the other for you. Mm-hmm. We'll just have to wait and see. The but we're cheering for you, Ryan. Next up, we get Sting and Kurt Angle in the back. And Sting says they're going to be better off this time around as far as the main event mafia. Um, Bully comes up to TJ Perkins in the back and asks if Kurt and Sting put him up to this. And he's thinking it's some conspiracy against him, against the Aces and Eights, to try and get the belt off of him, I guess. And... uh he says no, he didn't have no clue, but uh, anyway, Bully kind of says no problem. Threatens him a little bit, but um, then we get a look back at the whole Mickey James Velvet Sky thing that's been going on, and next, Velvet finally gets her rematch for the Knockouts title, mm. um, and when these two are in the ring, it, it's like, Almost more hotness than yeah. one ring can contain. <laughs> Women plus wrestling equals, I don't know what's better than that. <laughs> they're, they're both just so drop-dead gorgeous. Um, Mickey gives another fakey, nice speech before the match starts. Uh, it gives Velvet one last chance to walk away so she doesn't get hurt again. Um, decent match. Um Mickey ends up making Velvet tap with a, a crazy looking submission hold. It, it was really cool looking. Uh, not sure what it's called, but it looked painful as hell. And got a nice shot of uh, <laughs> Mickey's booty in the process. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, we we sound so perverted when we talk about Mickey and Velvet hey, wrestling, we're, but we're guys. We're, just, we're yeah, men. Yeah. We can't help it. Um, but they are both good wrestlers. Um, and after the match, Christy Hemi interviews a tearful Velvet. She's crying about her loss, which, uh, and the you tapped out chants are starting. But it's like, you know, come on. You know, it's kind of like a, a league of their own. You know, there's no crying in baseball. You know, there's <laughs> there's no crying in wrestling. Come on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, then we see Sting and Angle in the back. Bobby Roode walks by him and kind of stops and grins. And as he's walking off, they kind of grin. There, it's almost like they're kind of hinting that maybe he's going to be the guy, which we said last week. Ace brought it up first, that said that would be awesome. Um, but, um, and he is a former world champion, longest reigning TNA champion, as a matter of fact. Um, then Hogan, we see questioning uh, the ref about the suicide thing, wanting to know if he you know, noticed anything out of ordinary. And then we get Bobby Roode versus Magnus. It's a Bound for Glory series match. A nice match. Good showing by both guys. Roode's the shit. Yeah, it? Roode just, I mean, <sighs> we were talking about it during the match, and it's just like it, he's just – Main event. He, yeah. he he not only main event, but he is a master of his trade. Yeah. He he's perfection in the ring, and it's just it, it's it's a thrill to watch. Um, but unfortunately, Magnus gets the win here. Magnus looked good, and I, I don't have a problem with Magnus, but uh, I don't know. It, he wins by submission, putting him over. You know. 
on rude by submission. I just don't know about that. Yeah. But, um, then the Aces and Eights corner Chavo, Robbie E, and Jesse Goddard's backstage asking if they're suicide. Um, <laughs> and then when they're walking away, like Bully says something to Goddard's like, you need to cut back on your carbs or something like yeah. that. And Robbie looks at him like, he's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> then Storm and Gunner come out to the ring. Um, Storm says that tag wrestling is a science, and he talks about being a 12-time champion and why he picked Gunner. Out come Robbie E. and Godders with Tara. Uh, Robbie says they are looking at the t- two toughest guys in the locker room, meaning themselves, um, which is a laugh. He says to Storm that picking Gunner for his tag team was a mistake, and... Uh, <laughs> says he and Godders now calling themselves the Bro Mans. <laughs> Good God. Bro Mans, which, what's exactly that's supposed to mean? I don't know. No, it was Bro Mans. <laughs> yeah, and, and Storm, it says they're the future. And Storm's like, wait a minute, wait, did you just say Bro Mans? <laughs> he tries to backtrack, like, no, 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 it's two words Bro Mans. <laughs> and, and Storm's like, wait a minute, wait. Uh, I still heard bromance. Um, and then Goddard tries to take a shot at Storm, but Gunner just clobbers yeah, yeah, him. That was hilarious. Clobbers him, man. Knocks him slick out. It was hilarious. Um, <laughs> then uh, we see the um, invisible interviewer backstage asking Main Event Mafia about the suicide thing. Um Then we get another Bound for Glory series match. Ken Anderson against Samoa Joe. What did you think about this one? It was pretty decent. It was a pretty good match. I mean, I don't know. It's I love Samoa Joe, but I just cannot see Ken Anderson as a singles type guy for some reason now. I don't know. See, I I, I like Anderson. I I, I like him too, but it's... I always have. I don't... I don't know. And I'm not a huge fan of Samoa Joe. I mean, he's a good wrestler, don't get me wrong. Um, I've just I've just never seen his mass appeal. See, and that's what I, we kind of defer. I think Samoa Joe's a heavyweight champion. You don't think so so much. You're leaning towards Anderson as a heavyweight champion, correct? If I had to put the belt on one of those two guys, it'd be Anderson. And... And, and Joe, I mean, Joe, like I said, a damn good wrestler. I'm not knocking him at all. Uh, I know a lot of Samoa Joe marks are probably infuriated right now, but I just, I don't put him up there in that top tier with guys like Davey Richards and CM Punk. And, and he can he can go in the ring with those guys and, and hold his own just fine. I mean, he's had some spectacular matches with, you know, AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels. Some of those three-way matches they had were just great. Um, so I'm not knocking Joe. There's just something about him that just, I don't know. Um, I, I can't exactly, I just, I think his character's boring. I, I think is what it is. It's not. It's nothing to do with his wrestling ability, really. Um, Seems like he was a little bit more vicious in his Ring of Honor days. Yeah, but, but he could do a little bit more and get away with a little bit more. Back yeah, um, but it was an okay match, don't you think? Oh yeah, yeah I, was I, thought, fine. I thought it was a good match. Um, Doc and Nux come out, but stay out of the ring. Um, then out come the main event Mafia. They kind of beat on Doc and Nux until they take off, kind of chase them off. So now we kind of see what's yeah. shaping up here. Um, then Joe makes Anderson tap. And Angle and Sting get in the ring and celebrate with Joe. Looks like Joe's the new member of Main Event Mafia. Which you're okay with that. Yeah, I mean, I would have preferred it had been somebody else. But, you know, I talked about it last week that, you know, or maybe, no, two weeks ago, actually, that, you know, Joe was a member, and I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't get thrown in there again. And yeah. he has. Um, yeah, and I tell you, I, there's still a surprise coming, though. I, I can feel it. Yeah. Um, yeah, there, I mean, there's going to have to be one or two guys that weren't in there before yeah. and that you don't see coming. Um, but, so, yeah, Joe's the, the new member there, and we see him backstage 
giving Joe his his suit, making it official. <laughs> and as he's walking away, <coughs> Sting says, "You're gonna like the way you look, <laughs> like the men's warehouse commercial." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then Angle says, "I guarantee it." Yeah. Uh, I, I thought that was kind of corny, but kind of funny That's, too. I think it was kind of a little knock at WWE. Uh, yeah, don't you think? probably. Um, <laughs> At least they weren't shoving Big Macs down their faces. Yeah, they weren't advertising Domino's or Hardee's. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, well, it, it also could be that just recently in the news that the founder of the men's warehouse, I can't remember his name, but the fellow that does those commercials, um, they they just recently ousted him from the company. Mm. Um, he, he had, you know, the board of directors basically kicked him out of his own company. He hmm. had he had basically sold off the company, but remained on the you know board as a chairman or whatever. And yeah, they voted him out because he you know didn't agree with the direction they were trying to go with the company. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, back on subject here. Um, Hogan demands to know. Yeah, who calls suicide out is. calls out suicide to reveal himself, or he's going to strip him of the title. Out comes suicide, and Hogan, you know, once again talks about lifting giants over his head. Yeah. Uh, first of all, you lifted him up to about here. Then all, you tore all the muscles in your back. Yeah. <laughs> Not over your head. Yeah. Um, We're getting kind of antsy at this point. Yeah, right? it's, it's like, man. It away in us. Who is it, man? Who is it? I was, I, by that point, I realized it wasn't Styles because he wasn't quite big enough to be Styles. The Daniels, was Daniels, still back maybe, in my minds, yeah. maybe, um, and uh, so suicide refuses to unmask at first, and then out comes Bully, and he says to Hogan, "For once, he he and Hogan are on the same page, yeah. and he wants suicide to take his mask off right now too." Then Suicide gives a little speech, and his voice is altered, you know. Yeah. Um, I don't know if any of y'all remember the Black Scorpion angle. With Ric Flair? In WCW with Ric Flair and oh, Sting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it reminded me of that, where he's like, Sting. Yeah. <laughs> that was so silly. <laughs> um, but then right before, then the voice changes back to normal. He rips off the mask. And who is it, Ace? Austin Aries. Austin Aries, man. Out of nowhere. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, High five time for Yeah. <laughs> Mark out. <laughs> because this means that we're going to probably almost definitely get to see Aries against Bully when we go to TNA Live in Louisville for the Impact Destination X special they're doing Destination Destination X as a TV special rather than a pay-per-view this time. And we're going to be there for it. So we're really excited to see that match. Yeah. Um, Somebody's looking down on us. Yeah. It, <laughs> yeah. Because, uh, hell, when we bought the tickets, we just thought it was going to be a regular impact. Yeah. It wasn't until later that they announced that they were going to do the Destination X special that night. It's like, hey, bonus. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're pumped about that. Big surprise. Actually, this is one of the uh, shows of the year so far that I've really enjoyed the most. I yeah, like, you know, and to me, it kind of harkened back, you know, it, I don't... It was fun. Yeah, it, it harkened was, back to, you know, the good old days of WCW when they were at their peak. And, you know, every week was, you know, like there was a oh my God moment at the end, like, in, or a cliffhanger, and you, just, you couldn't wait to see what happened next. Yeah. It, you know, because a lot of... People and of course most of them probably weren't even watching back then or were so young they didn't really understand anyway. But yeah. you know, sometimes I get annoyed because all these WWE marks just bash WCW and make it sound like it was this crappy wrestling company. It wasn't. But if it wasn't for WCW, WWE would have never been right. as good as it was. And, and WCW kicked WWF's ass for like 82 weeks straight. Two years. I mean, yeah. it, it it was crazy. And They almost, almost legitimately yeah, did. almost put them out of business. If yeah. it weren't for horrible booking and management decisions... Um, and, and that's nothing I think people forget. 
WCW didn't go out of business because they weren't making money anymore or because, I mean, it, they went out of business simply because Ted Turner sold the company to Time Warner. And then Time Warner decided that they didn't want anything to do with wrestling anymore. You know, it's, it's like they bought it just to kill it. Uh, Let me ask you this real quick. In your opinion, do you think if Rock or Austin hadn't has got as hot as they did at that time, without the bad management on the WCW side of things, would have WWF bit the dust? I don't know. Um, I think they would have had to have at least scaled back for some time if they didn't, you know, if they didn't get put out altogether. Um, but. You know, who knows? But, you know, WCW probably would have went out regardless because they were still profitable, still the top-rated program on that network yeah. when they got kicked out. Um, it, they just decided they didn't want to be a wrestling channel anymore. And that was one of the biggest roadblocks that kept Bischoff and his group from buying WCW was the fact that there was no TV deal, which, yeah. like I said before, we talked about it, um, I think was kind of short-sighted on their part. You know, go ahead and buy the brand and shop a TV deal. You'll get one eventually. Yeah. Um, and that allowed Vince to buy it up for a paltry $3 million, and the rest is history. Yeah. But I, I'm just really, really excited the direction TNA is going. I've enjoyed it so much lately, far more than I've enjoyed WWE in a long, long time. Um and like I said, it has that kind of WCW feel, which some people use that as a criticism. I see it as a good thing as far as, you know, when WCW was at their best. Now, sure, the last year or two they were in business, it, it, it wasn't good. The writing wasn't good. The booking wasn't good. Do um, you think TNA's lacking anything right now? They lacking just one thing to maybe uh, put them right there? Besides a budget, a star, anything, what do you think? Any particular star you think would just take them right to that next level to put them I, right at WWE's level? Really, I think really all they need is to just keep going in the direction they're going in. Um, keep trying to build young stars. Mm, uh, very important. You know, it, it's fine to use vets like they're doing, but they're also, you know, they're trying to build guys like, I mean, the, gut, the whole gut check thing. Yeah. Total unknowns for the most part. Yeah. Uh, younger guys being built up that way. The, uh, you know, look at, I mean, Bischoff and Briscoe, they're trying to, you know, kind of build them up. Um, and they're using a mixture of vets and, and young talent, and that's great. I mean, trying to build up a guy like Magnus. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, just get some different faces in the mix, which, when, you know, when's the last time WWE, I mean... Without shoving I mean, them down our throats? Yeah, without <laughs> just totally making it ridiculous. I mean, Curtis Axel, maybe? Um, it's been a long time. Yeah, I mean, you just... it's. I mean, this, the product with WWE has become so stale. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the thing with TNA, man. You don't necessarily know exactly what you're going to get every week. And that's a good thing. But um, anyhow, that's it for Impact. And next, we're going to move on to SmackDown. SmackDown. All right, we got SmackDown from Columbia, South Carolina. And in the ring, we have a pinata dangling over the ring, saying that there's going to be a Fiesta del Rio tonight, which I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, then we have a pair of beer taps and bar stools decorated around the ringside with a bunch of Irish stuff because there's going to be a Dublin street fight tonight between Damien Sandow and Sheamus. Oh boy. So Damien Sandow comes to the ring and talks about how South Carolina was the first to succeed from the Union in 1860 and how they suggest, how he, he suggests that they should do the same. <laughs> And uh, Sandow says South Carolina is like a third world country. <laughs> Y'all is not a word. It's pronounced you all. And then he says you all are a bunch of ignoramuses. Which was funny. Oh, yeah. You know, 
and I mean, it's entertaining, but, you know, we get to the match, you got two big, big time stars here that have the potential to be, you know, bigger than, you know, this, but it's, it seems like they're reduced to like a cartoon type match, yeah. you know, a, a, a Dublin street fight. That's all WWE does anymore. I mean, even their they're straight hit, up regular yeah. matches are just kick, punch, kick, punch, off the ropes, kick, punch. Arm drag, slam, kick punch. I mean, sure, chairs and kendo sticks were there, but at one point uh, they were hitting each other with sacks of potatoes. It's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my gosh. What did you think of all this? Um, kind of a circus. Wasn't yeah, it? it really was. And man, I, I, I like Sandow. Um, but, you know, there's no really doubt in my mind that Sheamus was going to win here. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that's the, another thing about the WWE product, for the most part, just so predictable. Um, I mean, really, I, I would say 95% of the time, I know exactly what's going to happen before it happens. And that causes boredom. And, uh, your your crowds are starting to show it, too. They're starting yeah. to try to tell you about it. You might want to listen. Yeah. Then, honestly and truly, I'm getting so bored with this. The Kane and Daniel Bryan stuff. Uh, yeah, it's, it's I'm, just, I'm over it, man. Wait, what's, there, what's there to talk it, about it anymore? It's slightly humorous for a while, but now it's just like, okay, just, I mean, either be friends or be enemies. This, you know, constant bickering like children thing, is just, it's old. Yeah. yeah. Then we have the Miz TV segment with Paul Heyman, and it's just like, uh, Miz, what are they doing with Miz? I mean, this just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, they're all the whole CM Punk and Curtis Axel tag team te- teaming up, and I just, I don't. Where is this going with any of this? Do they even know? Uh, it's the same stuff every I mean, single week. Are, do you think they're setting up a Punk Axel feud? I mean, I don't know. I mean, with Heyman against Punk. Well, you'd think that they were setting up the Heyman and Brock versus Punk feud a well, couple weeks true. ago, but that uh, Brock, if you can't come to TV every week, please just get out of the way. Well, I mean, or at least every other week. Yeah. I mean, he shows up maybe a week before each pay per view, and it, yeah, how are you supposed to build, uh, you know, momentum for a feud that way, or build any kind of heat when you're only around once a month? Yeah, at best. Uh, yeah, I mean, what do you think of this whole segment with Axel coming out to the ring and them all going back and forth, Miz, Axel, and Heyman, and all this? I, I like Axel. Like I said, I'm yeah, still, he's growing on me a little I'm bit. I'm still not crazy yeah. about the name. The name kind of throws me off a little bit. I wish he would just be Joe Henning. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> and maybe even call him like. Perfection or something, not Mister Perfect, but it, yeah. you know, I mean, they might as well. He's using a uh, updated version of Mister Perfect's music. Yeah, he's that's that's kind of growing on me too. A little bit. Yeah, he, he's he's used the the Fisherman's or well, excuse me, the Perfect Plex. Um, he's even wearing like the the triangle on the trunks. Mm-hmm. You know, Kurt always had that triangle. Um, whether it was on his trunks when he was wearing trunks or when he was using wearing the uh, the singlet, he'd have it on the back there. Mm-hmm. But that's that's another you know tribute to his dad there. And like I said, it makes no sense to me that oh well I want to you know blaze my own trail, so I'm not going to use my dad's name, but I'm going to basically reference him so much that I mean. I might as well use his name. I it, everybody knows you're Joe Henning. You look just like him. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> shave yeah. the beard, grow some hair, and bleach yeah. it blonde. You're you're Mister Perfect. Yeah. I mean, uh, which I guess this whole segment was pretty much setting up a Miz and Curtis Axel Intercontinental Championship match in the right, future. Right. Right. Yeah. Axel gives him a good kick in the midsection, then hits a modified neck breaker and just pretty much leaves him laying there. Leaves the ring with Heyman after, you know, that. So, that's that. Yeah. Then we get AJ Lee versus Natalia. And this was kind of funny because then Caitlin comes out dressed up like uh, AJ, skipping yeah. around the ring and carrying on, making fun of her, naming off all the guys she was with, Punk and Brian and Cena and Ziggler. 
And, of course, AJ's very frustrated. And the distraction goes on enough during the match that Natalia actually gets the win against AJ here. Yeah, I was shocked. <laughs> uh, I, I really was. I was I was stunned. Uh, like I said, that's one of the 5% of the time I, I didn't see something coming. Uh, <clears throat> then another damn video from the Wyatt family. <sighs> then we get something actually very exciting here. Teddy Long announces the, the uh, participants for the second Money in the Bank ladder match. And this has got us really excited right here. You got Wade Barrett, Jack Swagger, Antonio Cesaro, Fondango, Dean Ambrose, Cody Rhodes, and Damian Sandow. Bunch of young, hungry guys right here. Yeah. This is this is going to be exciting right here. We don't really have any idea of who yeah. could really take this, but it's kind yeah. of up in the air, really, but all these guys. You know what's funny? You, you read that list, and at least half of those were the names that we threw out when they announced the one for Raw. <laughs> we're like, what about these guys? These yeah. are the guys that you should be throwing in there. It's like yeah. they were listening to us, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, Still no Justin Gabriel. <clears throat> no, but nah, take we'll, what we can get. We'll see him later. We have Kane versus Randy Orton, but once again, how many times have we seen this match? Yeah. It's, I mean, what does this do for either one of these guys at this stage in their careers? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I mean, anyway. Winner by pinfall, Randy Orton, and that's that. Then Brian's mouthing the cane about, what are they complaining about now? They're crying, I, crying about something. I just, he's I, saying he's I, sorry I, for whatever. I, then we get Justin Gabriel, our boy, finally. Uh, this, we were wondering if he was still on the roster. <laughs> Versus Ryback, yeah, which is kind of like not only job the guy out, but let's job the guy out who's made an ass of himself on every single pay per view for six, eight, ten, whatever, how many months? Yeah, I mean, out. he's let's job him out to the monster loser. Yeah, it's really just bury him. How about that? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I guess they let uh. <laughs> let Gabriel get like two moves in, you know. But and then Jericho's music hits. He comes out and uh, acts like he's concerned about Ryback's leg. And then basically Jericho calls him Cryback. Yeah. <laughs> and that was about that. Uh, then we get more White family. Yeah, more yeah, White yeah, family. Yeah, Oh my God! Then we get actually this is pretty good. The Shield and uh, versus Christian and the Usos. Yeah, it was a good match. Uh, get to see the Usos here again. Uh, Ty, or Seth Rollins had a sick uh, sunset flip over the top rope onto the Usos and Christian, which was pretty sweet. Yeah, I enjoyed this one. It was a good match. I'm just excited the Usos actually get to be on TV, and Christian and the Usos actually beat them clean. Yeah, even more surprising. Yeah, so yeah, I mean. That was pretty cool. Then we get Fiesta Del Rio, which was garbage. But Ziggler did come out and toss uh, yeah. Ricardo into the table from the top rope. <laughs> and then he grabs the guitar to run after it. Del Rio. Del Rio escapes from the ring. So he just clocks Rodriguez right in the head yeah. and knocks him cold. The Fiesta turned into a siesta <laughs> yeah. for Ricardo. <laughs> <laughs> and then Ziggler... Ziggler goes and celebrates, but I thought those band members were for Del Rio, and they just continued to play on, and he yeah. played right there with them with Sombrero on, and that was actually a pretty funny segment, trying to turn him face. Yeah. And that was... But then next good. week, they'll have him, you know, yeah. come out and fight another baby face. <laughs> and job to him. Yeah. <laughs> And that's SmackDown, which ugh, kind of a letdown after watching Impact Thursday. Yeah. Kind of a step back or two. Yep. But Can yeah. Raw save us? I don't know. Let's mm. see. Raw is next. Monday Night Raw. Now we have Raw. We got Vicky Guerrero backstage talking about the prestige of the WWE title and the World Heavyweight title and how there's going to be a champion versus champion match. And how they've pissed all over that prestige for the last yeah. 10, 15 years. The only way I'm interested in a champion versus champion match is if it's, if it's to unify the for titles. For the titles. <laughs> yeah. Which was, hell will freeze over. Non title, who cares? Oh, gosh. So that Daniel Bryan comes out. He's hyping up the crowd. 
And they got the ladder in the ring, the briefcase up top, and then out comes Randy Orton, and then CM Punk, and then Seamus and Christian. I can't remember what order they came out in, but they're all just (laughs) stroking their egos in front of each other. I've been in Money in the Bank this many times. Well, I did this, and I did that. And RVD, I know you're watching at home. And it's just like, can we just start out with a match every once in a while? Well, and this this took up like the first 15 15 minutes. 15, 20 minutes of the show. And basically... Oh, Kane was out there too. And then yeah. basically I know where or just RKO's Kane, then everybody just slithers out of the ring and that's it. That's it. Well could have used a lighter for something it's sitting there. Uh, oh, it's not looking good so far. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then yet another promo for the Wyatt family. Gosh, 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 gosh. But actually I think later we're gonna get some more information on the Wyatt family. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Then we get the Shield versus the Usos and Christian again, which, yeah. once again, not bad. I mean, not as good. I don't right. think it was as good as SmackDown, but it was, hey, and at least it's not the same people yeah, over and over again. Um, and the Shield gets redemption here. Um, yeah. So, but here's my question. Now, are we going to see the Shield against the Usos and Christian every, I mean, twice a week, every week for the next eight weeks? Well, I think it's shaping up. I, Christian versus Ambrose for the U.S. title, right? And, and which is fine. I, yeah. I get that. And you know, to even you know ha- have a third match, you know, yeah. uh, have a tiebreaker. That's yeah. that's fine. But is this going to go on for three months and just have these pointless matches over and over and over again? Like uh, uh, Kane and Daniel Bryan and Orton versus the Shield. Yeah, I mean, it, it just by the time they and there again. It, not long after we said it, they finally did kind of change it up a little bit there as far as opponents for the Shield. Yeah. Um, then we got Daniel Bryan backstage talking to Kane, and then Vicky comes out and says he's made a match tonight with uh, Orton versus Kane, and Daniel Bryan's going to be the special guest referee. Get these three guys away from each other. <laughs> Orton yeah. just tapped out to Bryan last week. That should be done. Why are they still involved with each other? Yeah. I just don't. Yeah, Get I mean, there. it's it's time for Brian to go out on his own and face other opponents and get in a some sort of title picture here. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Then we get Dolph Ziggler versus Jinder Mahal, which, I mean, throw away, but at least Jinder Mahal actually got to do some wrestling. Moves, yeah, he right? got a little offense which, in there. Which, you know, that guy does have a good look, but they got him playing so out of right. place, it, it makes him look stupid. Yeah, I mean... He needs to be that heel, anti-American, just badass. But of course, I don't. I think all three of the guys in Three and B are paying some sort of penance. I think yeah. they're being punished. And I think their punishment is almost over, though, because have you noticed they're starting to let him look a little bit better, yeah, week by week. Like you know, Slater got the one win over Kali. Yeah, um, McIntyre looked pretty good. Um, in a match not too long ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and the commentators even said, hey, you know, McIntyre can wrestle. He's just a, you know, goofball. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So then we move on to Brad and Vicky back in the office, which, God, I can't only take so much of this. And Triple H comes to speak with them and basically says, you listen to what Stephanie has to say, you listen to what Vince has to say, but you know what you do? You don't do what either one of them says. You listen to me, which is kind of humorous. Yeah, because it's funny. Because sometimes, like I, I've had bosses before that you have to deal with in that way. Yeah. You because they tell you to do the most idiotic things in the wrong way to do things. You've been doing it the right way for years, and they want you to change it just because they're the boss, mm-hmm. even though they have no idea what they're doing. You know, so I'll tell the other guys, look, just say yes and shake your head yes and smile and say, you got it, boss. And then after they're not looking, do it your way. You mm-hmm. know, just, yeah. <laughs> just say, okay, okay. That's, that's how you have to deal with some people. Okay, yeah. all right, no problem, yeah. gotcha. But as soon as they're gone, go back to doing it the way you've yeah. been doing it for 20 years. Yeah. The way that works. So then we have Randy Orton versus Kane, number 64. And... <laughs> Daniel Bryan's the referee, and then he stops the match. He, he calls it because one of them wouldn't get off the other one. Then he restarts the match. They go on and on, same old stuff. Then Orton gets to the point where he's about to hit the finisher on Kane, the RKO, that Daniel Bryan gets in the way. 
and won't get out of the way, and it's blocking Orton, so he tries to shove him, but it's too late. Kane hits him with the big boot. Orton goes down, and then Daniel Bryan gives the real quick three count for Kane to get the win. And just they are fussing back and forth at each other. Again, Kane's mad that he did a fast count. He thinks that he should have won it fairly, and Daniel Bryan's still being partial, and who gives a shit? (laughs) Then Orton RKO's Daniel Bryan out of nowhere, but once again, I just... Uh, I don't know what to say. What do you think? Uh, honestly, it's like you said. It's just kind of like, eh. I mean, how am I supposed to get excited about this? Yeah. I just, uh, then we have Punk and Axel backstage. Punk's basically saying that he trusts Heyman, but he doesn't trust Axel. Well, we kind of saw yeah. that coming. And, and you know, and another thing, we've talked about this before. WWE. Ignoring their history or remembering it in a, in a selective <laughs> yeah. way. He was in the new Nexus, Punk. Curtis Axel was Michael McGillicuddy, a member of Punk's Nexus. And I guess he f- forgot that Darren Young was as well. Yeah. Well, they weren't in the same Nexus, were they? I'm sorry. Uh, no, Darren no, Young I'm was sorry. gone by... He was in yeah. the original. He was yeah. gone by the time Punk took over. Yeah. Basically, the Punk Nexus was McGillicuddy, who's Axel or Joe Henning, uh, Husky Harris, who Wendy is Wyatt. Wyndham Rotunda, yeah. and... Um, oh, it was uh, David Otunga, wasn't it? David Otunga. And Mason Ryan. And Mason Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Skip Sheffield was injured. Darren Young had been booted out. Barrett was uh, gone. Barrett, you know, he he basically, remember him and Punk wrestled for the leadership. Yeah. Uh, then Barrett took off to SmackDown and started the core yeah. with the other original members, Slater, Justin Gabriel, and then they added Ezekiel, Ezekiel Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. Remember Michael Tarver in the original Nexus? Oh, God. With the mask over the Oh, yeah. Face. Uh-huh. Like, kind of yeah. like... Uh, uh, Mortal Kombat kind yeah. of thing. He didn't last long. No. But basically, this is setting up Punk and Axel versus the primetime players, which I kind of dig the primetime players. <laughs> they're not bad. Yeah, they're all right. Um, then we get Fondango with Summer Rae. So now Fondango's back, which is awesome. And then he's facing Sheamus tonight. And Fondango gets himself counted out here uh, on purpose. Yeah. And uh, I, I believe it was during this match that... Uh, JBL was talking about the the title versus title match, and of course they're they're hyping the the coveted history of both these belts tonight, and yeah. everything. And they keep taking a look back at uh, you know former champions and everything, and you know JBL was talking about opportunities and having them or not having them, and he said that Jerry Lawler was one of those guys that you know never had an opportunity to win the world title or the WWE title, which isn't entirely true because I remember just a couple years ago, Lawler actually wrestled for the title. Mm-hmm. I believe it, I believe it was a ladder match. You talking about a couple years ago? Yeah, just recently. It wasn't that long ago. Just in the last few years. An elimination chamber, maybe. It wasn't. It, it was. I mean, he may have at a pay per view yeah, too. Yeah, I think. I but then that. he got another shot. On TV. Oh, okay. Okay. And it's like they both just totally ignored that that ever happened, which, okay, that's, but th- I thought this was cool. And I'm, mm-hmm. I was kind of surprised that they let him say it. Jerry Lawler says, well, I was AWA world champion in 1988. Thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, I thought that was cool. They probably uh, slapped him with a fine. Yeah. So he got back <laughs> He'll be fired next week. Yeah. Um, yeah. I thought, cause you know, they always try to pretend that the other promotions never even existed. Except when they want to sell a DVD. Yeah, then all of a sudden it's the best thing in the world. Yeah, but yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. Now this, this, this like confused me and <laughs> angered me all in one. This next segment and <laughs> made me laugh. It's like best of three worlds. Chris Jericho made me laugh because he was on commentary. The Miz and Ryback were in a match. It angered me that this match made no sense. I guess you could say it frustrated me too, or you could use those two words for what I'm about to say next, but you have Ryback beating the ever-living dog shit out of the Miz, and I timed this because we thought it was going to be under three minutes. He beat him for over five minutes, and then Miz takes a couple quick kicks at Ryback's leg, and then Ryback right. says he can't continue. What a bitch move. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, and, and Are they just trying to bury this guy? <sighs> I, I don't know. I I can't... I don't know where they're trying to go with this. They're... I mean, 
after this, you can't possibly try to make him a monster again. I, I mean, um, unless it's some sort of master plan. Like, you know, I, I don't know. Um, and they they even really harped on the fact that, hey, that's not something you normally see. That somebody, you know, asking for a stoppage like that for themselves. Is it safe to say they've ruined him? I think so. Yeah, I, I really do. Uh, yeah, he was really getting over too. Yeah, he, he was he was over like crazy before they turned him heel. They were even letting him do his own promos. I mean, whatever. he he was over. I mean, when he when he wrestled Punk at um, in the cage at Hell, Hell in a Cell, Cell last year. Yeah. I mean, he was. I mean, he was as big as anybody at that point. I mean, the guy, he was on fire. Hey, I heard him at Extreme Rules against John Cena in the last man standing match. I mean, they were crazy for him. Uh, well, good job, WWE. Yeah. You, you did it again. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the Miz gets the win by default there. Um, and then he, Jericho slides in and hits Miz with a code breaker, which, <laughs> what did that do? I mean, no, he hit Ryback with the code Oh, he hit Ryback? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't know. I was probably standing up pacing at that point <laughs> out of anger. <laughs> then we have Mark Henry cutting the promo at the top of the ramp, basically saying that he pretended to like the boys for all those years and how all the fans were just a bunch of puppets. And then he put the camera right in his face and basically said, John Cena, I, I'm going to beat your ass, and walked away. And I was like, yes. <laughs> what do you think of that? Uh, I enjoy any time that anybody threatens bodily harm to John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. That was cool. Then we have Vince and Brad and Vicky backstage. I got up to piss. Yeah, I mean, I mean uh, Vince got on about the way she used Daniel Bryan, blah, 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 nothing important. Then we get the primetime players versus CM Punk and Curtis Axel. The whole time, Punk and Axel are like, are you going to take me in? Are you going to take yeah. me in? Are they both wanted to be in the match the whole yeah. time. They, you know, they both wanted to showboat. Uh, what did you think of this? Uh, kind of short. Yeah, I mean, not really much of a point here. Just setting up tension between those two guys more than anything. Um, you know, Axel ends up. Covering the still in the wind, wind. punk at the GTS. Yeah, and ta- he tagged himself up. in and stole the pin. Of course, Punk was upset about that. Then we get a pointless match between Caitlyn and Alicia Fox. Caitlyn wins with her one of two moves, the spear. Um, Brad, Vicky, and Stephanie—they just <laughs> oh god, Stephanie looked kind of haggard. Do you notice that? She, yeah. I, she looked yeah. like hell. I, I did. Yeah, I was like, whoa. You know, did you age 10 years or? I don't know. Uh, yeah, maybe just the way she did her hair and makeup that particular night, but like she looked like a different person from two weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what they talked about. Stephanie pretty much says she's not pleased with Vicky and her comments about her family. Yeah, I, I think part of it was also the outfit she was wearing. That blue yeah. thing. Whatever. Spandex type wasn't doing dress. nothing for her. The color wasn't right or something. Yeah. Um, then we get a promo for RVD, which I'm excited about. He's not, but we'll go on to the next thing. Cody Rhodes with Damian Sandow. Then we get Antonio Cesaro with Zeb Coulter, and they also announced that Jack Swagger is now back. So that looks like we got a trio of Swagger, Coulter, yeah. and Cesaro, which seems to be pretty pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I like to see where that goes. Um, then so Cesaro faces Rhodes and basically Cody Rhodes just straight up jobs to Cesaro, which I was screw Cody Rhodes at this point. Yeah, at this point, yeah. um, Yeah. I like Cody and I hate the fact that he jobs a lot, it seems. But Cesaro's a main guy. Yeah, it's okay to job Cesaro. (laughs) Then we get some bullshit backstage of the Bellas and Eva, Marie, JoJo. Whoever Whoever these other two jokers are. I I, I was like, who are these people? And then they're scripted and it's just... Yeah, it's just just uh, a plug for the Divas show on the channel. And then it doesn't get much better. Then after all the promos and recaps of the title history through the the last several years, we have the champion versus champion match, Cena versus Del Rio. Not bad. I mean, 
What do you think? Uh, not bad. Not great. I mean, it meant nothing. I Did mean, nothing for either guy. No, and of course, I mean, you know, Cena's going to win. Yeah. There, I mean, it, there's no point really in there, there's no suspense. Yeah. There's no drama. There's there's nothing. Yeah. It's pointless because you know Cena is going to win. And he can't even lose a non-title match. No, he can't even win. I mean, he can't even lose a non-title match. I mean, it... Um, it just frustrates me to no end. I can't take this. Seriously, this is... And, a- and then, you know, Henry and Ziggler both come out for distractions. Um, but, of course, you know, Cena, Superman wins, as always. Um after the match, Henry grabs the bell. Yeah, Henry grabs the bell. Basically, throws it down, and Cena goes to grab it. Mark Henry acts like he's going to do something, but doesn't. Backs away, and he walks away. Yeah. Point of the watch. Time's ticking, Cena, and that's the end of Raw. And then to close the show, we get one last final Wyatt family promo because they're debuting next week. <sighs> finally, and the only reason I say finally, like it's like a relief because. Maybe we won't have to see all these vignettes anymore. Um, I don't care to see them debut except just to end the vignettes. <laughs> I'm not excited about it. I'm just glad that I don't have to watch the vignettes anymore, hopefully. Maybe they'll kidnap Cena and we'll never see him again. <laughs> That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Or maybe they just, you know, come out and slop him like the Godwins used to, you know? Yeah. He's got too much pride for that. <laughs> That's raw. And now the final segment of the night, this week in wrestling history. Um, and I thought it appropriate, especially since it's 4th of July week. Um, this week in 1985, the NWA held the very first ever Great American Bash. Um, it, you know, the only event created by the NWA or uh, Crockett Promotions at that point um, that the WWE did eventually resurrect Mm -hmm. a couple years after the buyout. But, you know, the Great American Bash at that time was basically only second to Starcade Mm -hmm. in their um, annual lineup there as far as big events. And it was a hell of a card. And it was one of those rare instances where a secondary title took the main event. You know, I can't think of that happening a lot. I remember Davey Boy and Brett at SummerSlam uh, 92. For the Intercontinental title. For the Intercontinental title was main event over the world title. But a lot of that had to do with the fact that they were in in England. England. Yeah. Um, But the main event was Dusty Rhodes against Tully Blanchard for the world television title. And also, Baby Doll was on the line. Um, Isn't this the one where she was on the line, but if the other one was a with Okay, because Tully had Baby Doll, right? Yeah. But if Tully won, he didn't get anything. Right. Is that right? Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, And... I think Dusty got baby doll for 30 days if he won. <laughs> and, uh, you know, great match. And Dusty took the title and baby doll. And it was actually the start of a face turn for baby doll because she ended up staying with Dusty by choice and being his manager for a while. Um, but yeah, I just thought, you know, you know, and it ended up being one of their most prolific shows. The bash, like I said, was, one of their top pay-per-views for years and years and years after that, up till they went out of business. And then, like I said, the WWE even brought it back for a few years. That It was called the Great American Bash the first couple years, then they shortened it to just the Bash. Yeah. And then they actually did it as not a pay-per-view, but a TV special two years ago, I think, mm-hmm. 2011. Was, was it? No, it was last year, wasn't was it? It, it might have been 2012. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was last year. Because um, it was a battle royal that Zack Ryder won. Okay. On a Thursday night, I think it was. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, remains to be seen if they're going to do anything with it from this point forward. But um, like I said, especially with it being Fourth of July week, Independence Day week, I I, I thought it was appropriate to uh, talk about the bash there for a minute. But uh, that's pretty much the show, and 
don't forget, we got the email address set up. Once again, we would love to have you guys uh, communicate with us. Um, I'd like to do a quick little segment at the end of every episode where we go to the emails and read one from somebody or even a couple. Um, but we just really haven't been getting many. So, um, you know, we, we'd love to, the show to be more interactive, like I said before. So, you know, send us those emails. Uh, don't matter. Just tell us what you think about the show. Um, even if you think I'm a bum, you know, that's cool. Email me and tell me. I don't care. Um, we'll, we'll talk about it. But anyhow, that's uh, the show. The address is tpwshow at gmx.com. Drop us a line. Let us know what you think. And that's it. And for Mr. Ace Larson, I'm Electric Eric Davidson. We will see you next time.